Wilfred lived in a peculiar corner of the universe where the ordinary and the extraordinary engaged in a perpetual dance, neither quite sure who was leading. His abode, a cottage that could be confused with any other cottage if you weren't paying attention, stood at the crossroads of the slightly bizarre and the utterly mundane. One day, as Wilfred was contemplating the cosmic absurdity of his existence while sipping his tea, a package arrived. It wasn't an ordinary package, mind you. It was a box that seemed to have an argument with the laws of physics, and judging by the commotion inside, the laws were losing. Wilfred, ever the intrepid explorer of the unconventional, approached the box cautiously. Curiouser and curiouser, he muttered to himself, channeling his inner Lewis Carroll. Upon opening the box, he discovered a peculiar device labelled the Galactic Gizmo, version 42.0, for all your existential quandaries. It came with an instruction manual so convoluted that even seasoned philosophers would throw in the towel. Now, what's this all about? Wilfred wondered aloud, his bushy eyebrows furrowing with a mix of confusion and amusement. Wilfred marvelled at the blinking lights of the vending machine. It was a nondescript, outdated model, standing alone in the farthest corner of the office break room. He inserted a few coins and watched as the machine whirred to life, emitting a series of clunks and clatters. Hmm, what culinary delights await me today, Wilfred muttered to himself, eyeing the limited selection. The machine's offerings ranged from stale pretzels to a questionable tuna sandwich that seemed to have defied the laws of expiration. After careful consideration, Wilfred settled on a pack of unidentifiable crackers. The machine obediently disgorged the chosen item, accompanied by a burst of air that scattered crumbs across the floor. Ah, the pinnacle of office gastronomy, Wilfred declared, collecting his prize. He strolled back to his desk, blissfully unaware that his supervisor, Ms. Arbuckle, was observing the entire spectacle with a raised eyebrow. And where have you been, Wilfred? Ms. Arbuckle inquired, her tone a mix of annoyance and amusement. Just on a culinary expedition, sampling the finest the break room has to offer, Wilfred replied with a grin, holding up his pack of crackers as if presenting a gourmet dish. Ms. Arbuckle sighed. You're an odd one, Wilfred. Just get back to work, please. Wilfred saluted, crackers in hand, and resumed his seat. Little did he know, his snack time escapades were about to lead him down a path of bureaucratic absurdity that even the most seasoned interstellar hitchhiker would find bewildering. As Wilfred sat at his desk, methodically munching on the enigmatic crackers, a memo slid under his office door. He picked it up, unfolded it, and read the bureaucratic masterpiece that awaited him. Two, Wilfred Filbert. Subject, unsanctioned snacking activity. Dear Wilfred, it has come to our attention that you engaged in unsanctioned snacking activities in the break room. As per section seven, subsection B, paragraph three of the employee handbook, unauthorized consumption of culinary items without prior approval is strictly prohibited. To address this matter, you are hereby summoned to the Snack Compliance Committee hearing scheduled for precisely 2.42 p.m. next Tuesday. Failure to attend will result in penalties, including but not limited to demerits, reprimands, and potential reassignment to the notoriously dull Department of Stapler Maintenance. Your prompt cooperation is expected. Sincerely, the Snack Compliance Committee. Wilfred raised an eyebrow, a bemused smirk playing on his lips. A snack compliance committee? Well, this is certainly a new level of bureaucracy, he mused. Little did he know, the wheels of office absurdity were turning, and he was about to embark on a journey through the intricacies of snack-related regulations. Wilfred couldn't resist a chuckle as he prepared for the snack compliance committee hearing. Dressed in his finest mismatched socks, he strolled into the designated meeting room 
where a solemn assembly of office drones awaited. The committee members, adorned in starched suits and stern expressions, eyed Wilfred as he took his seat. The chairman, a man with a penchant for pocket protectors, banged a ruler on the table to call the hearing to order. Wilfred Filbert, intoned the chairman, you stand accused of violating the sanctity of snack time. How do you plead? Wilfred, channeling his inner intergalactic hitchhiker, replied, Not guilty by reason of cosmic hunger. The crackers were calling out to me in a language only my taste buds could understand. The room hushed as the committee deliberated, whispering incoherent snack-related jargon. After what felt like an eternity, the chairman banged his ruler once more. Wilfred Filbert, we find you guilty of cosmic snacking. Your punishment is to compose an ode to the forbidden crackers, uh, celebrating their flavor profiles and culinary prowess. You have until the end of the week to present it to the committee. As Wilfred left the room, he couldn't help but marvel at the sheer absurdity of the corporate galaxy. An ode to crackers? It seemed he was navigating a surreal, bureaucratic maze with each passing moment. In the days that followed, Wilfred dove headfirst into the art of cracker poetry. He found himself pondering the metaphysical nature of snack time and the profound impact of each crunchy bite. Armed with a quill and parchment, he composed verses that elevated the mundane to the cosmic, turning crackers into celestial entities. On the day of reckoning, Wilfred, with his poem in hand, stood before the Snack Compliance Committee. The chairman adjusted his glasses and motioned for Wilfred to begin. Oh, crackers divine, your crunch echoes through the corridors of existence, Wilfred recited, his voice resonating with a dramatic flair. In each savory bite, I taste the symphony of flavors, a cosmic dance on my taste buds. The committee, initially skeptical, found themselves nodding along with Wilfred's poetic ode. The absurdity of the situation transformed into an unexpected appreciation for the art of snack appreciation. As Wilfred concluded his poetic masterpiece, the chairman, with a tear in his eye, declared, Wilfred Filbert, you have successfully redeemed yourself through the power of verse. The cosmic snack gods smile upon you. Case closed. And so, Wilfred emerged from the Snack Compliance Committee hearing, having turned a mundane infraction into a poetic triumph. Little did he know that his journey through the cosmic bureaucracy was far from over, and more absurd challenges awaited him in the interstellar cubicles of corporate comedy. Wilfred, now a celebrated cracker poet, found himself thrust into the eccentric world of interstellar paperwork. His newfound fame preceded him as he navigated the cosmic bureaucracy, armed with his quill and a stack of parchment. One day, as Wilfred perused the Galactic Employment Office, he stumbled upon a peculiar job listing. Wanted, professional asteroid namer. Intrigued by the absurdity of the position, Wilfred decided to apply, thinking, why not add asteroid namer to my already impressive resume of cracker poetry? The interview process was unlike any he had experienced. A panel of sentient nebulae and a quasar with a dry sense of humor assessed his qualifications. Wilfred, with a twinkle in his eye, regaled them with tales of his cracker poetry escapades. To his surprise, the cosmic entities were amused. The quasar even emitted a cosmic chuckle, causing nearby star clusters to shimmer in response. Wilfred Filbert, you possess the wit and creativity we seek. And so Wilfred became the official namer of celestial bodies, christening asteroids with names like Galactic Giggler and Cosmic Quipster. His quill danced across the parchment, leaving a trail of whimsical monikers that echoed through the cosmos. Little did Wilfred know that his celestial nomenclature would catch the attention of an otherworldly stand-up comedy club setting the stage for his next cosmic adventure in the universe of humor beyond the stars. Wilfred's life took an unexpected turn when he received an invitation from the Cosmic Chuckle Club, a renowned stand-up comedy venue nestled between galaxies. Intrigued, he donned his finest cosmic cravat and set off for the club, 
As Wilfred stepped onto the stage, the audience comprised sentient beings of all shapes and sizes, each with a unique sense of humor. Unfazed, he began his routine with a cracker-inspired joke that echoed through the cosmic auditorium. Why did the quasar bring a snack to the black hole party? Because it wanted to turn the event into a celestial feast. Wilfred blinked in surprise as the pneumatic tube whisked him away to a peculiar room filled with eccentric gadgets and whirring contraptions. The air was tinged with the scent of roasted coffee and a mechanical parrot in the corner squawked, Mind the gravitational anomalies, old chum. Uh, gravitational anomalies, Wilfred muttered, eyeing the room's uneven floor. He felt a sudden weightlessness, his feet almost floating above the ground. A sign on the wall read, Please adjust your sense of gravity accordingly. As Wilfred adjusted to this curious environment, he noticed a man in a polka-dotted lab coat emerging from behind a giant teapot. Ah, you must be Wilfred. I'm Professor Quirkenheimer, head of nonsensical engineering. Welcome to the Department of Absurdity. Absurdity? Wilfred echoed, unsure if he should be fascinated or concerned. Indeed, the professor exclaimed, adjusting his goggles. Our mission is to invent the impractical and discover the unnecessary. Today, we're perfecting the art of square oranges. Wilfred chuckled, realizing that this department had its own brand of peculiar humor. The professor handed him a triangular orange, saying, Try it, my boy. It may not roll, but it confuses the fruit flies. As Wilfred nibbled on the geometric fruit, he wondered what other oddities awaited him in this whimsical corner of the bureaucracy. The professor grinned, exclaiming, Now, on to the next preposterous experiment. The diverse crowd erupted in laughter, their guffaws echoing across the cosmic expanse. Wilfred, fueled by the laughter of aliens and extraterrestrial entities, continued weaving his comedic tapestry. He delved into the absurdity of space-time anomalies and the peculiar habits of interstellar creatures. The audience, composed of beings with tentacles, wings, and crystalline forms, found Wilfred's humor universally amusing. Midway through his routine, a gelatinous blob with multiple eyes rolled into the club, emitting a sound akin to interstellar jazz. Wilfred, seizing the opportunity for a cosmic improvisation, incorporated the blob into his act. Uh, why did the gelatinous blob enroll in a comedy class? To master the art of slapstick comedy, of course. Watch as it does the cosmic shuffle. The blob transformed into a whimsical dance, eliciting uproarious laughter from the audience and Wilfred basked in the glow of his newfound cosmic comedic success. His performance had caught the attention of a cosmic talent agent, setting the stage for Wilfred's intergalactic comedy tour and propelling him further into the whimsical realms of the universe. Wilfred, still grappling with the triangular orange, followed Professor Quirkenheimer through a door labeled Experimental Reality Manipulation. The room inside resembled a fusion of an art gallery and a mad scientist's workshop, complete with floating sculptures and levitating furniture. Behold, the professor proclaimed, pointing to a swirling vortex of color in the center of the room. We've developed a portal to the dimension of irrational bureaucracy. It's the perfect solution to paperwork. You simply throw it in and it gets lost forever. Wilfred stared at the vortex half expecting it to demand its own set of forms. But what about accountability? He asked cautiously. Ah, accountability is overrated, the professor replied, adjusting his bow tie. In this dimension, it's considered a quaint notion. Now let's see if we can send a fax to the 17th century. As the professor enthusiastically dialed a rotary phone connected to a quivering jellyfish, Wilfred marveled at the sheer absurdity of it all. The paperwork, the quirky departments. I suppose paperwork is unavoidable, Wilfred mused. But at least here, it's a delightfully absurd adventure. The professor handed Wilfred a form shaped like a pretzel and a pen that quacked when clicked. Indeed, my boy, embrace the chaos and you'll find joy in the paperwork. As Wilfred filled out the pretzel-shaped form, he couldn't help but smile. 
The bureaucratic absurdity surrounding him was strangely liberating. Perhaps, in the end, navigating the intricacies of paperwork was less about finding order and more about finding humor in the chaos. And so, armed with his newfound appreciation for the absurd, Wilfred continued his bureaucratic journey, a bemused grin on his face.